Hello. Hey, Sophia. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you today? Very well. Very happy to be here with you. Thank you so much for accepting this invite to be a part of Wonder Woman Festival and for this interview. Mm, it's a pleasure. Thank you <laughs> yeah. for having me. Namaste, everybody. Hello, viewers, whosoever is watching. We are very happy to have Sophia Sundri, who is uh, a transformational leader and the author of a very, very top selling book, Liberation into Orgasm Through Pleasure and Beyond Pleasure. So, and she's also running two schools uh, Serpentine Mystery School and the Priestess School. This is all online, Sophia. Both of them are online. No, the Serpent Mystery School and the Priestess School, uh, they are in person trainings. So, the Priestess School is a school for women, that, uh, it's for women who see themselves as leaders in the world. And we meet over a year or two years and have trainings to extend the program. And Serpent Mystery School is for both men and women. So, both are in person trainings. And I also have a bunch of online courses. That's yes, you have, in fact, uh, quite many interesting courses, especially for women. I would highly recommend. And for me, I feel Sophia as this orgasmic tantric princess that if anybody really wants to open this channel, I would highly recommend her and uh, that she can just give you the right recipe or tools or practices to be in touch with your orgasmic self, with your pleasure, and how to really enjoy this body and connect not just to this body, but also more than body, as she says, beyond pleasure. So it's also beyond body. And mm -hmm. uh, let's talk a little bit more about your journey, Sophia, as I was reading also about you, that you were a lawyer and then one day you got fired and that's how your journey started. It's like blessing in disguise also. Quite people maybe can delay during these quarantine times when maybe many women or people are losing jobs. So some message they can get from your story. Yeah, well, uh, thank you for this beautiful intro. And I also want to uh, kind of stop with something that you mentioned there with this whole orgasmicness, you know. I find that, um, in fact, it, it's uh, orgasmic, like in the sense that we think of it, like this explosion of pleasure and kind of those amazing experiences. It happens, and, and it's more like a natural outcome of um, something else. Yeah, it's more like a byproduct. Because I find that real orgasmic state of being, and that's what I'm writing about in my book, actually it's a natural state of being. And when we are anorgasmic or when we feel contracted and um, somehow restricted in our emotional sense or in the body sense or in our sexuality, uh, it's just, it's, um, it's an unhealthy, it's a byproduct of this kind of unhealthy way of meeting life or not meeting life at all. Uh, and this orgasmic natural state of openness, of spontaneity, where energy is naturally flowing. It's our natural state. So... Yeah, so that, I just feel like that's an important point for people to, to understand that it's not, you know, we're not developing something that is extraordinary. Actually, we're coming back to the naturalness and in our natural state, it's our birthright to just be deeply connected to ourselves. So, yeah, just a little side note, but yeah, thank you for also oh, the question. I'm very happy to share a little bit of my journey. Although I also find that sometimes... I, I, I don't want to spend too much time talking about myself because it's really not so much about my personal story. I much rather have us all come together and experience something that will uplift, enliven, and enrich ourselves. And then we go in the world and we meet each other beyond even need to talk about all the story and how, who I was, what I was. But of course, it's maybe also interesting and people will relate, as you say. Uh, so, yes. I used to live in Russia. I'm Russian uh, originally, and um, I used to just have this normal program about how life should unfold. So, for Russian women, you came a good husband, and then my life is happily ever after, you know, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, and uh, I 
um, I, it didn't quite sit right with me, but still I didn't, it didn't really seem like I had another option. It, it seemed like that's a recipe for happiness. So I got a good education. I studied in the most prestigious university in Russia. That was my ambitious self. Like I wanted to at least like feel that I accomplished that. Um, and I became a lawyer and I very early I started working uh, and I worked for two years as a lawyer and um, all the way through I was start starting to tap into some more mystical um, parts of myself sometimes just spontaneously you know so in in this Wonder Woman festival I, I, I will be speaking and sharing practice from the, um, even as I was a teenager, I had some really interesting experiences. Totally, you know, I never heard of anything like this. I never heard of anything. People would hear me ask questions like, who are we really? Where are we really coming from? I'd say, oh, you need to go study philosophy, you know. But I would sometimes have those spontaneous, interesting experiences, even something that had to do with my yoni or something spontaneous, activation of the sexual flow of energy in my body. And uh, somehow I felt that there's kind of more to life than this uh, education, uh, house, a good husband thing. So I kind of got, was getting this intuition there. And I was, in parallel of being a lawyer, I was also stepping more into the yogic uh, realms and practicing more and more yoga. And then uh, that came this uh, incredible day where uh, the universe understood that my path is meant to be different <laughs> than that program. And uh, she basically kicked me, kicked me out of that life that I was living. And uh, I, I now looking back, I can say that it Sorry, was I just great. want to mention to the viewers because you are breaking in between so that they know that the connection is not so good. And uh, please bear with us. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm breaking a lot. It's, it's because it's windy here, so sometimes it's a bit tricky. But, um, uh, well, I hope that those who are meant to hear will hear. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, and then, so that, that grace happened and I got kicked out of that life. Although at that moment, it didn't feel like grace at all. It felt like I was just collapsed and uh, life didn't make any more sense. And, and that track seemed to be so clear, uh, you know, that pathway, it just broke because I came in the office and I saw that my desk was empty and basically no one noticed, no one gave me a notice, no one told me anything that was going to happen and the next thing I knew is that I was fired and not knowing like totally collapsed for a few months I was so lost I, I didn't know what to do with my life it was like what's next like should I look for the same job that doesn't quite feel right okay I tried to look for the same job should I should I, what should I do like should I just like it was so confusing it was like a such a felt like a dead end like i didn't i was totally uh, confused and then uh, i started somehow looking inside somehow i got this inspiration to to look at how do i want to live my life okay that way doesn't work so the question is so what what do i want instead and then i started uh, googling basically i was googling like um, how to how to become more confident that was my question because I felt that all my troubles that they were coming from being not confident and troubles were including that I, I actually so I was not very happy with my life I felt like I had good friends but it still still felt like we we were all quite confused like we didn't know which way to go we were all partying and um, it didn't really feel like it was a meaningful deep uh, relationships between us then my uh, intimate life was a total disaster I was having some weirdest uh, relationships uh, with artists always or some very um, artistic but totally uh, unstable people that like uh, one day I remember I, I, I had this guy who was fighting so hard to get my attention and to uh, seduce me and then he seduced me and brought me home to his home and then the next thing he tells me oh I need to tell you something I'm like what he says, do you have a girlfriend i ask him he says i have two girlfriends 
<laughs> and none of them knew about each other you know it was not a, like a, <laughs> a conscious open relating or anything so i had to, this kind of story is always like i had this weirdest man around me and i was so unhappy because i really wanted to have this deep meaningful relationship but then i i was like okay none of it has like it doesn't work none of my life works so i need to look inside to understand like how do i want it to be and then yeah i was i was i came through that that, that was my seed I, I, I figured out i could improve in my confidence and then uh, see from there and then uh, luckily I, I came across the, um, lots of good literature uh, lots of it was around like really developing your yourself from inside and then from that space of like the um, power of uh, attraction or law of attraction kind of things like how to increase your resonance so that you start attracting things that you actually want instead of just like random which like all, we all are quite familiar these days with the stuff at that time it was totally new totally revolutionary for me and very quickly I, I figured out that you know I was I thought I was looking how to become more confident but in fact I, I was just I just took a complete uh, change of my life and then I ended up booking a ticket to India and I came to where you are right now Shushanti I came to oh, Goa that was your first yeah. uh, trip out of then Russia after you were as yeah a... well I, tra I traveled a lot even before that and yeah, i wasn't going before but your spiritual yeah. seeking and seeking yourself that was your first yeah 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 yeah, I was already in Goa before that and I was just in two weeks it changed my life just being there because I was really like those questions I was having people were talking about them at least and I was like oh wow okay that feels like home and then I well, once it all happened I remembered that Goa was a strong place for me so I, I came to Goa and then I stayed in Goa for a month I think uh, because uh, I didn't have I could have more visa uh, time there I, due to visa situation and then I, I, I my visa expired but I wanted to go and, and do more yoga and then people told me yeah in Thailand there there is a school where you can do more yoga and, stuff. and then I came to Thailand and uh, in fact stayed there and started practicing lots of yoga and got introduced to Tantra and um, first I was like oh Tantra something about sex I don't need you know sex stuff but then I ended up doing this course and my mind was blown in seven days. I, I was, I, I, I just, yeah, like people were was, was speaking to, to those things that I knew, like deep inside. I knew about the sacredness of life, the sacredness of desire, the sacredness of sexuality, that it's not like something to, you know, become more sexy or attractive or more orgasmic again. Yeah, it's more like, how deep can you connect with yourself as a human, as a being, as a divine being, and how deeply can you recognize that and really live as embodiment of that? So, yeah, that's a, a little bit of that story. It's, it's very interesting, you know, when you are saying, I always also feel we already know what we need to know. It's just mm. brushing off the dust. Exactly. Because we are otherwise so much influenced, and once we hear what our soul wants to hear we connect and tune in very quickly into it and mm -hmm. yeah yeah and also what you said previously that you know being or gathering is that is the natural state and very beautifully you said and you know made the side note thank you thank you for making that side note it was very mm -hmm. important and interesting and yeah I resonate highly with that. I would like to know, you know, for our viewers and also on our group right now, there have been questions and, uh, you know, women really want to know practically, you know, they, uh, they hear multi-orgasmic, you know, how to be a multi-orgasmic woman. So, but I also know being in India and Indian women that even I feel like all across probably Asia or even Western countries, there is very, very little sex education. There is very little education around these topics or subjects or self-pleasure. So what would be your step-by-step -step guide to women, starting if they haven't experienced self-pleasure, then from self-pleasure, you know, experiencing orgasm and then 
being multi-orgasmic? What would be your practical guide or tips to them? Mm. Like well, me, you know, until 29 years old, I never self-pleasured. I didn't know what, I didn't even hear about it. I didn't know anything. I was very naive. So, so you know, just to throw some light on it for the maybe viewers or some women who are, you know, some message they can get through this. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's quite complex. So I wrote a whole book about this. So, <laughs> so there is a, and it's not only for women, it's also for men. They also can develop this uh, capacity. But again, it's, it's um, more about like also. women because of the Women Festival and we'll be posting your interview first for the Women Festival. Yes, that's why I just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but all these women, they also interact with men. So, okay. you know, it's like when. Ah, we are losing you. Oh, we lost you, kind of. Ooh. Oh, okay. Now you're back. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, and as you said beautifully first, uh, a bit before, is that it's more about removing stuff rather than developing something. You know, it's like we really are like th that's the recognition that we need to find. And if there's any purpose to seeking, yeah, uh, and uh, so many identify as spiritual seekers and looking for some, it's it, the only reason for that is to really just remove all that we are not, yeah, because then in the very core there is this jewel that that we need to touch upon and that is multi-orgasmic and ecstatic and always in bliss and like that that's the one yeah but then uh, yeah okay on the way like what do we do practically and um, the first now thing is just the women and men both right because we lost well, everybody. everybody yeah everybody i say like whenever we work with women we also work with men because then women go in the world and then they interact with men you know so it's like it's everybody really in, in this yeah. loop. Um, so uh first thing is is really developing the self-awareness i find you know this this awareness dynamism like when we move through life and how we interact with the outside world like what 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 are our beliefs what are beliefs of the society what do we absorb how do we like what do we think about ourselves yes if we are full of negative body image self image if we look in the mirror and think horrible things to ourselves or stuff ourselves with food which is just not uh, not uplifting not not supporting not nourishing then um, what kind of orgasmicness can we speak about yeah it's really like it come it starts from from this um, understanding like who we are as people who we are in the world and how what do we think about it and what does it mean to be a woman yeah so that that feels like it's a really important first step to just really come to yourself okay i am a woman what do i love about being a woman yeah, why why do I love being a woman? Some women are like, I actually don't love being a woman. I prefer to be a man. Like, I think it's so much easier for them. So then we need to go like, no, there was a reason I incarnated into this woman. So why? Yeah, why? What is this? So this is kind of developing the awareness genuinely. And then uh, if we speak about like specific... Um, and then I kind of like there's two ways I find, like the top-down way and the bottom-up way. So it's like the top-down, like if we start to really explain and kind of release all this like mindset and come to really deeper understanding of who we are as divine beings then naturally this relaxation comes naturally this openness of the body comes it's like we open to, to grace to like really a recognition of ourselves as those big beings this limitless beings and then this natural relaxation comes into the body as well and then natural this openness happens even some women um, share that they experience amrita or which is called like this female ejaculation just from being and meditating or just looking at life and absorbing the beauty around looking at the beautiful sunset and then all of a sudden all the sacred water start uh, running and this uh, orgasmic state takes over yeah, so that's one way, the top down. Uh, and then there's this bottom up where we go like, okay, let's work directly with the body. And then how we can work with the body, we can do it with a practitioner or a therapist, or we can do it by ourselves, or we can do it in groups. 
yeah and um, uh, myself and other beautiful women that you have in this uh, festival we are offering those kind of environments where women just can gather and practice with each other and support each other in this opening and um, uh, one of the things we can do is to find blocks in the body yeah and perform something that's called the armoring yeah and uh, the armoring can also happen on emotional level or on the physical level and, and find those places where we hold tension in the body and then work directly on them yeah and go into that and we can use specifically touch and pressure and holding and just really being with those uh, body parts that that uh, are not allowing love basically yeah wherever we have the contraction that means that we just don't let love flow freely um and the next thing is to uh, start connecting direct you know or other ways to connect with the body and the next thing which is a kind of a more rare uh, thing to talk about is connecting directly with the yoni yeah, and that's what I'm going to have uh, the discourse in, in the festival yeah, during, the, during the weekend. Uh, the yoni, yeah, specifically, yeah, not just because so many are like, okay, let's do psychotherapy, let's do yoga, yeah, yeah, that's how you empower yourself. Well, I find that as long as we're disconnected from the yoni, all of it is just fluff. Yeah, so really for women, we were born into this woman's body and it means that we have a vagina. And this is something that needs to be cherished and adored and recognized for what she really is, this vagina. This place that can give birth, that place that can give life, yeah, that place that bleeds, that like is alive, that changes every day of your cycle, your vagina changes and uh, affects, it's responsive, um, it kind of stays in communication with your whole neurochemistry. It's like every day we're a different woman, you know, we're not meant to be the same yesterday and today it's like we all are really wild in our nature and our vagina is really that place that um that reflects that and uh, through which we can connect to that very powerfully so starting to develop this relationship with the yoni and it's um it's very emotional for many women and not surprisingly because also the yoni she is very receptive so she has a tendency to absorb so what Whatever we process, whatever we don't move through in, in ourselves and life, it will be absorbed and stuck in the yoni. So there are ways to uh, really work with the yoni. And even the whole full body can be found in the yoni itself. You know, it's like the yoni is like the map of the whole body according to Taoism. There are all the organs and each and every organ is connected to certain emotions, certain um, experiences. Yeah? Um, and as we work on the yoni, we can process all these emotions and, and let that energy flow naturally. And then when the nature, energy, energy naturally flows, guess what, guess what happens? Yeah, that's, we return to that natural state and that orgasmic state and that multi-orgasmic state, which is no woo-woo thing. It's a totally natural thing, trust me. <laughs> True. And uh, how much emotions then play part in it for a woman? Uh, do you think it stop, uh, you know, the potential of a woman being multi-orgasmic or you know, flow of energy because she gets sometimes too much in, you know, caught in emotions or drama or so. Um, yeah, well, emotional flow is extremely important, uh, but it does not, it's, it's very different to drama. Yeah, like to, uh, we need to also develop discernment to be able to catch ourselves where we are starting to indulge. Because feeling feelings, it doesn't mean to even... Uh, sharing them you know it's a whole next thing and how to share emotions is a it's a whole art around this and so little so few people really know how to share emotions in a non-violent way where the other person can actually receive those emotions uh, but first of all it's just we need to learn to feel them yeah because um it's it's been repressed for a long time and we are still kind of recovering from this because not that long ago like 
four, five, six grandmothers before us, that's where women were, were burnt on fires because we were considered to be dangerous because we had those uh, strange powers uh, like being, and we would, call, we would be called witches and, you know, just considered to be dangerous. So it's not that long ago. So we all carry those memories somewhere. So now uh, there is this fear when I feel so much anger. Oh my God, maybe I'm going to kill myself with all this anger. Anger is beautiful when we really allow it. It's a full-on creative force. Yeah, and same with sadness. If I allow myself to really feel all the sadness, am I going to drown in all my tears? And um, uh, so, you know, that's what we have to also open within ourselves to space, to, to feel, and to go like taking action is the next step. Yeah, first, just that feel. And um, uh, this is, uh, yeah, we know this is actually. There's no way. It's not separate from our nature. It's not separate from our body. When our body opens and our emotions open. When our emotions open, our body opens. Yes, but um, um, I completely agree that the first step is to express. But would you also like to say something on that? When we become that anger, we also sometimes try to project, you know, project it on somebody else that it's because of you or... You know, how do you, how would you like to distinguish between that and how would you like to say that, you know, the women can handle that emotion well, you know, that it does not become a drama, but remain. Yeah, expressing, expressing it as a, yeah, uh, expressing it as a whole other thing. You know, and we need to have a whole kind of uh, education around this, how to express emotions. So it's a, it's a completely separate story, expressing them or, or not, yeah, to, to others. Um, very frequently, you know, if we have a conflict with someone else, um, sometimes like it's really best to process it first by ourselves before we actually bring it, unless we have like amazing harmonious relationship where we learned not to take it personally because also sometimes it's very beautiful when a person can just hold that pure presence and then not take it personally and just allow you, you to express it but first of all we have to be that for ourselves that's why where this work of inner woman and inner man comes in very handy where we develop that capacity for pure presence and being there for ourselves no matter what being that unshakable pillar for ourselves yeah and then you know that this is my inner man who will protect me and who will support me and who will take me from a situation that is wrong for me and who will be with all my emotions and that's the one who ensures that it is safe to feel all that i feel um so uh, yeah that's that's really um, yeah it's a it's a totally kind of separate chapter to what do we do with emotions afterwards but first is that there has to be this solid place to, to feel them to feel it yes you have uh, designed a very interesting online course i was looking yoni yoga and um, it's a very beautiful combination of Tantra and Yoga. Uh, I could feel though I haven't seen the course yet and I would like to go through it, you know, one of the next days. Or, uh, can you say something about that? What is it uh, and how it can benefit women to open their sexuality or heal any kind of shame, you know, sexual shame around their own bodies mm -hmm. or any kind of traumas or conditioning? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually, uh, this course I created the, maybe about in 2016, I believe. And since then, and this course went through a, um, an upgrade. I call it now Activated Woman. So it's, about, it's the same course, but it's expanded and uh, it includes Yoni Yoga. And uh, yeah, Yoni Yoga is in fact a system that I developed, which uh, really teaches women to... Um, connect with the yoni and through specific practical tools, specific practical exercises through the work with the yoni egg, through the work with uh, yoni wands, those um, magic wands that we can use inside of the vagina uh, and um, some other kind of uh, practices and the yoni energetic cleansing and uh, different tools we have there that yeah, really help um, like for me, to be honest, I don't understand why we're not doing it. 
you know, because it's like, it's so simple. Also when you get, a, when you understand how it works, it's so simple and doesn't have to take much time. But without this, like I made some experiments, like where I wouldn't, I would go without practicing for a month. Yeah, I would go without practicing. And then another thing I would do is I would have like normal orgasms, which most people like clitoral orgasms, which are just quick orgasms. Yeah, you build against pressure, like you feel arousal and you build, you let it build and then poof, this kind of fireworks happen. Uh, so I, I made this experiment. So I stopped practicing and I, and I started having those orgasms. Um, and uh, it was incredible. I felt so grumpy. I felt so heavy. My period was l longer than ever. Um, because also, like, uh, how our, our relationship with our cycle was our period, very much dependent on our relationship with the yoni as well. Um, then I had pain in my lower back. I had cramps before the period and during the period, which never happens to me. Um, and the, like just moody generally and heavy and and I was like oh my god but that's how most women live and they think that this is normal Whereas it is not it is not normal we are meant to have this energetic movement all the time and um, our yonis are meant to be uh, activated and connected to daily really. so uh, yeah that's that's why I created this course and, and I find that uh, yeah women totally love it and like one of the simplest things that happens to pretty much 95% uh, of women who do this course uh, that their periods become much much uh, shorter mm -hmm. in time and uh, cramps become non-existent and uh, they heal some amazing uh, things like endometriosis like I had a student who had the endometriosis and she wanted to get pregnant and then she uh, after being uh, in training for two weeks and she went back home and got pregnant immediately. Um, I healed polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is supposed to be incurable. And um, yeah, it's like all of this, you know, any kind of heaviness, any kind of disease is all this, uh, this symbol that we are not moving enough the energy. And uh, there are ways to do that. Thank you so much for uh, throwing light on this uh, yoni yoga subject and uh, yeah, I'm sure it's very interesting to practice it also and uh, it can work a lot of wonders for the women's body, you know, because this is very common uh, issues with women regarding their periods or menstruation cycles, the pain and, uh, you know, irregularity. Uh, as you know, you just, we started talking about menstruation. Can you, uh, I know as a woman and being an Indian woman also that uh, there's a lot of uh, shame in the society and, you know, the women is considered dirty, you know, still in India, even the most maybe rich, middle class, low class, all, you know, classes of people, I should say, are all educated non-educated people they still feel women is dirty during her menstruation cycle in fact there is a very ancient indian you know logic which people have forgotten but you know why she was uh, not allowed in the temple why she was not allowed in the kitchen to work uh, they have changed the whole meaning of it now in all these years so can you say more about the you know the sacredness of this time for women and how she can nurture and support herself during this time yeah absolutely um i um i have a even a little book that uh, like a pdf that uh, people can download from my website um, about the sacredness of menstruation and also not just menstruation but we have those four cycles in the months where we change completely where our whole uh, neurochemistry changes and uh, we become different people and this is so magical it is so beautiful to get in touch with it because our body wants to be different and our body wants to be treated differently and when we go along with it um, it's it's uh, totally normal to have to have the cycle become more regular and uh, just mood uh, not so like not have all those emotional swings and stuff Mm. it's like whenever we have like you know i find like whenever we have this discomfort i digress a little bit from what you asked but i, I will come to that uh, but i find that whenever we have a uh, discomfort uh, or like something that 
makes us very angry or something that makes us very frustrated is just an alarm going off saying like hey something wants your attention and uh, then by looking in checking we can uh, regulate ourselves and so yeah with menstruation um, definitely that can be a really huge thing like if women really believe in this being dirty during menstruation uh, it can be a huge uh, putting like a big cap over the whole femininity because it's like every month or like or some women even they can develop such a disgust of this so they uh, their periods become really irregular or they develop some kind of uh, dysfunction hormonally uh, because of those beliefs or because of what we learned I had a client whose father stopped talking to her uh, when she got her period and it was not so long ago it was like she's like in her 30s or something and he stopped talking to her when she got a period so I was like oh my god that still happens in these days you know we really like it's incredible how, how poorly educated we are and what kind of brainwash we've, went, we've been through and, and just like you said, uh, now we, uh, they say that, uh, yeah, in, so women are not allowed to enter when they are on the period. Like so, sometimes on temples, it's, you can even read it. Like, if you're on the period, please don't enter. And uh, how it's been translated by Brahmins is that a woman is dirty during those times. That's why she should stay away. Uh, but it's nothing but just this another manifestation that we see of this control over this force of the feminine yeah, the, that came together with patriarchy and the fear of the feminine where in fact in the uh since like really old times in tribes it was known that women become so powerful during their period so they were even asked to journal their dreams during the period and then according to those dreams the tribe would set the course of action for the whole next month because women tend to have this incredible psychic abilities. We become so receptive, so strong. So it's not that we shouldn't go to the temple. We shouldn't go anywhere. We should not even wash the dishes and do any housework. We should just lay and rest because in this time we want to be in that power and let that power be accumulated so that this next month we can, we can uh, move in more strength with that accumulated wisdom that we accumulate during those times. And uh, also it was quite common to have those red tents and now they're kind of coming to life again where women would come during period uh, and uh, be together, you know, not see men be in this cocooned environment, um, bleed together, share stories, rest, and then go back into the world feeling recharged, renewed, and, and ready to shine our light again when the ovulation comes, especially. Yeah, it's another special time of the cycle for us where we are naturally shining and naturally becoming even more beautiful and, uh, and uh, energetically powerful and outward. Like demonstration is more time of the inward and ovulation is when we are going forward. Yes. Um... So as you said, this term activated woman. So how, um, I should say that as more I have seen in the world, or I would say that more the woman becomes strong, she becomes a bit much inhibited for the man. So the man, so it's hard probably for a strong woman to find that activated man. So how do you say about this chemistry between the activated man and woman or something about this dynamics? I, so that's the name of my online course, activated woman. And I have another one called activated men. So <laughs> the, there are also practices and tools for men that also help them get activated. You know, I find that this is a misconception. I don't think that uh, strong women are intimidating. They, uh, it's more like uh, where, how do we become strong? Yeah, how do we become activated? Because in a kind of modern way or like a mainstream way, a strong woman, it's a woman who is empowered, but she's empowered in her masculine, not in her feminine. You know, so there's a big difference uh, because we have this masculine model of society that is presented to us here yeah, that we are encountering and masculine values of success, achievement, or like what it means to be successful. Yeah, to have those achievements to move forward, to go, conquer, you know, like 
outward like uh this are, these are all good qualities but they're masculine yeah and they if they're not con balanced with the feminine qualities then if we just stay with it like pushing and going forward and initiating and you know um then it's like we we get empowered only in that masculine sense which is also important yeah we spoke about this the importance of cultivating the inner man um, but still our greatest empowerment is getting empowered in the feminine for women who have this feminine essence which in my experience is most women uh, women who understand the value of receptivity that's where the connection with the yoni comes in again because that's the most receptive part within us so that's why it's like again like connecting with the yoni with the wisdom of the yoni how the yoni functions how she opens when she opens she only opens when you love her you know that's the thing there's love is that feminine quality and uh, uh, we like as women we are here to love really and we need to uh, do anything we can that supports us in loving because that's our greatest giving and uh, love can take on different shapes also when Kali comes and roams through your life and uh, slaps you on the face it's also a form of love yeah so this also is a powerful feminine way of, of being uh, but also those qualities of just being receptive being uh, rested in yourself feeling nourished feeling that you are content within yourself that you are like this holy cave that that is filled with light at all times and she doesn't even need anyone else to come in and fill her up or she doesn't need to go and achieve something and prove to the world that she's worthy that she's strong that she's capable but more like that like whoa, resting within yourself and leaning and turning towards yourself and um more magnetizing things towards us rather than going and getting them that that's more the feminine way and this i, I don't find it to be so uh, intimidating because also you you resonate yeah when you're really empowered in that feminine way you really uh, exude uh, this resonance and you uh, of course there are different people in different levels of development you know according to the age like you cannot expect from a three-year-old you know certain things you will expect from a 23 year old it's like it's normal yeah we develop as we as we mature and sometimes people develop uh, you know more maturity in their 20s than they have in their 60s this is also possible uh, but the way who comes in our life it, it's totally in our hands yeah, it's it's totally a response to our resonance you know we all perhaps you have experienced and people who are listening to this when you have major shifts in your life see that people tend to change in your life as well and sometimes it's so sad when a good old friend goes but then looking back you can always understand that well because we actually our path separated our vibration was no longer a match to each other so yeah i, I don't think that this is true I find that if women are complaining that there are no good men, it, it means that she didn't go deep enough inside of her, really. And it's not the blame, but it's more like a, a power, you know, I recognize that it is your power and who you attract, it is within your power. So um, I understand that it can be frustrating, but it's so wise, yeah, it's so wise. And then uh, once you really start to see that your environment changed and it really matches you and matches what you desire, then you understand why you needed to struggle through all those times when you didn't feel met and matched and uh, because that kept pointing you to deeper depth. You. Do you have anything to say on monogamy and polyamory and um, what do you in your life generally practice or it is nothing like, yeah, what do you have to say on both of these and what is it for you? Um, well, um, there's a, like, yeah, the strange labels because I find that everybody has their own meaning of what means monogamy, what means polyamory. You know, for some people, uh, monogamy means that you are together and you're not even allowed to appreciate other people's beauty 
uh, or uh, look at other people or uh, even kind of find other people attractive like you know there's there's this also like level and if you uh, are you know somehow expressing interest in another person then you are cheating or something like that. yeah so there's this level or there's a bit more loose level where people uh, like or like a polyamory you know some people think oh polyamory means people are like, having sex with whoever they want whenever they want and all of this and then there are like people who are very like specific like they have this polyamory like so they have three relationships and they are sometimes married to one person and then relationship for 10 years with another person they have this managing those relationship so there are so many ways to understand it so that's why I, I kind of shy away a little bit to use those labels but what I can say is that uh, what uh, what is really important for me as a uh, as a woman on the path that I've chosen, and it's uh, um, this path has a lot to do with service. Yeah, I, I discovered that my life is in service, and I am serving truth. I'm serving love in any way I possibly can. And uh, what is important for me I, is in alignment for that and supporting me in that. And it's supporting, like before we were, I was saying, like how love is a feminine greatest gift that we can give. So then we need to strategize, you know, it's not that, oh, okay, I'm just going to be love, you know, and I'm going to love and let others love me. No, we have to get really intelligent about this. We can have to go, what supports me in loving? What supports? And um, uh, for example, when there are multiple relationships, I find that what happens is that those relationships they take a lot of energy to to manage them, to to really like process what is happening there and understand those dynamics and and look at this and process and feel jealousy and process your jealousy and uh, all of this the human stuff and. I've went through phases of, of this in my life and that was good and, and meaningful for me at those times. But now I feel like I, I am at the point where um, this will be just a leak of my energy. If I had to manage all those different relational dynamics, this would be a leaking energy and I still love actually and to pour my love and to uh, serve. Um, so that's what is important. What is serving my dharma? And that's how... I, I, uh, the question that guides me in, in my relationship and uh, how to, uh, what, yeah, what am I choosing, what am I wanting, and what am I not wanting? So I hope this answers your question. Yes, yes, you were just breaking a little bit in between, but yeah, it, it does. We did get the answer. Um, would you like a child in your part? Is that also your part? Do you want a child? Well, if this is part of uh, my service, then of course I'm open for a child. And I feel it's not up to me, you know. I feel like uh, it's a I can offer myself and surrender. And then if that wants to happen, then it will. And if not, then it won't. You are so you are open if it has to happen for you. Then yeah, of, of course, of course. Yes, that that had been my you know kind of also answered two three years ago. That if it has to happen, then, and it really happened very quick, like <laughs> so. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I could hear, I could hear the child. Oh, I'm not afraid at all. I feel yeah. like uh, it's uh, it's such a beautiful path. It's it's perhaps one of the strongest uh, things a woman can do because this is where we really have to love unconditionally. You cannot uh, switch off and go somewhere. No, it's like it's your guru there. So it's beautiful. <laughs> it is. It is the biggest guru in the life. One can. <laughs> <laughs> Any message for the women you would like to give uh, Sundri who are watching you or, you know, in the festival, anything you would like to say? Yeah. Um, well, I look forward to the journey uh, deeper and to also practice together so that you can also experience all, all those things. Um, and um, yeah, I feel like we can end with what we've started because it's the most powerful thing to just to remind uh, everybody that there's nothing to fix really there's nothing wrong there's nothing uh, no idea that we have to hold on to no one specific way that we have to be but uh, more like um, yeah recognize that yeah all is fine and and if Actually, within arts, we, we always know what is the right next step for us to do. The, the best thing you can do is just to remove all the nonsense that we've accumulated on the way. 
So, uh, but uh, really in our nature, we all are divine beings and I'm um, very happy to meet you in the workshop and dive deeper into this. So don't miss Sophia Sundri in Wonder Woman Festival, 30th of April. She would be further digging in deeper on the secrets of Yoni to discover. And uh, thank you so much, Sophia, for being with us together. Thank you so much for bringing light to many of the subjects. And we look forward to have you on 30th of April. Thank you. Thank you, Sri Shanti. Very beautiful to meet you and to connect in this way. Thank you for the beautiful conversation. Yes, you have a beautiful day and quarantine time and life, yes. So, yeah. it's good to see you. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching us. Thanks from both of you. Thanks from me and stay connected. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, Sophia. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>